What's going on everybody? Jeff in Control Robinson here with another model showcase. This time it's the Imperial Triumvirate, a word that I have struggled to say, but we think that's pretty close. This was painted by a local painter who uh, has worked with Frontline Gaming in the past and is just an amazingly talented guy. I sometimes go to him to have some of the characters painted and, and uh, I love the work that he does here. We can see Cypher first up with a gorgeous sword, great detail, good base here. Uh, really cool model, definitely a force multiplier, uh, especially in 7th edition. We'll have to see how he functions in 8th edition, but a very cool model on the tabletop. Uh, a lot of cool fluff there as well in the sense of like, is he a good guy, is he a bad guy? Um, a lot of 8th edition's fluff is, is finally starting to kind of answer that. We're getting closer to a resolution in terms of his lifelong mission towards the Emperor and the Golden Throne. Um, I like the weathering on him. I like that it's, you know, part of his lore uh, as Cypher is that he's been around the block a little bit. He's weathered. He's uh, been fighting on both sides for a long time. He's shrouded in mystery, and you can really see that captured here. We then move on to the Grey Knight's uh, lead librarian. The name is escaping me right now, which is super awesome. That's the kind of, you know, that's cool. That's the, the level we're at right now. But a lot of incredible detail. I, the Grey Knights in particular just have such gorgeous armies with so much opportunity for detail. You can see all the heraldry all over him. Uh, the detailing on the Thunder Hammer there. And I just find this model to be really, really fantastic. In fact, when filming this, Anne actually asked if this is the main character of this set. Um, just because of how much detail and how good looking he is, you can kind of see how that would be the case. Uh, powerful model and a gorgeous one in the detail. I thought that uh, our painter Israel did a really good job making him look unique, making him look special. Um, which is really important with these releases too, because each of these are important characters towards the story and towards uh, the game itself. They, they play a role, if you will, kind of like Belisarius Call in a video we've done previously, painted by Frontline Gaming. And kind of see that shield here. A lot of opportunity, by the way, for, for customization. You can put a, you know, um, a lot of independent painting there, and you can just kind of go into detail if you want. General theme, obviously, being that you kill demons and you don't like bad people. Bad, bad men. Um, yeah. And I think we're going to get a shot of the front here maybe in a second. Yes. And one of the really, really cool things about this is not losing out on detail on the face like that. Um, it's one thing to have something at a tabletop stand, which is really nice and functional and good for the game. But to have those models pop, you really need to be able to get in there with the detail. And of course, we get up to the big boy himself. The girly man. The gorilla man. The new emperor. Uh, Guillemin. I love this model. Uh, I didn't think I would, to be honest with you, especially coming off of Magnus the Red. There's just so much epicness going on with Magnus the Red, but I, I did. I ended up coming around and really liking this model. I think a lot of it is the detail, and, and for me it's kind of a weird thing because it's also um, the fluff behind it. I love the idea that Belisarius Call actually forged this armor. The armor has special rules in terms of like uh, bringing him back from the dead and just kind of keeping him alive. Uh, well, at least game mechanic wise. I don't necessarily mean that he dies and comes back. The flaming sword, a lot of action there. That's something we're seeing more from Games Workshop as the models have more actionable poses and are kind of almost in motion while obviously being a model, so being static. And then on the back, there's actually almost even more detail. The, the power pack, the uh, wrist mounted gun, all of it so unique, so new, so fresh, so very different. And it's pretty incredible too now, looking at Primaris Marines, you can kind of see where they were, you know, where the inspiration for them and, and it kind of began and where they were going with that. It starts here with Guillemin. And again, kind of talking about previously uh, why these models pop so well. I mean, just look, even just the back of the legs here are incredibly unique. Um, I like the torch effect there as well, kind of adding to that fire on the sword creating a little bit of symmetry there, so it's kind of more of a presentation as well. Almost a singular diorama, if you will, with just the just the one model. And one of the nice things about Israel and his work is if you look closely, you can kind of just keep seeing new things almost every time. You can see the oaths there on the wrist as well. Uh, I like the pink as a contrast to the rest of it. It's really important with these models too is to include a lot of colors because it can become very quickly you know, a three or four color set. And here we have them all presented before us, looking awesome. Um, so yeah, I just want to show this off. These are beautiful models. Um, like I said, this is a local guy, Israel. I love working with him. He's a competitive player, great guy, one of my good friends. 
and I love showing off his models. I am sponsored by Frontline Gaming. They do an incredible job as well. I've got some more models that are going to be going up on the videos uh, of the YouTube here soon, showing off some of their stuff. If you haven't, make sure and check out Belisarius Call, uh, Magnus the Red. Those are all things painted by Frontline Gaming, one of my sponsors and awesome people. I hope to see you guys soon.